So now we'll have Mar Rico Pastor, Álvaro Martínez Monge and Xavier Villa de Godoy that will give a talk that's entitled Can we identify, change the color or stretch a single ship using optical tweezers? Hi, good morning everyone. We are uh, Xavier Biade, Alvaro Martinez, and me, Marrico, and we will present you our work performed in the Small View Systems Lab at Universidad de Barcelona. We call our presentation, Can We Identify, uh, Change the Color or Stretch the Single Ship Using Optical Tweezers? And the answer is, is that it's impossible. So, Okay, so what we call our presentation with this title? Because imagine that all of you are farmers and you lost your gases, glasses and you are controlling your folk of sheep. In this condition, you cannot see uh, each sheep clearly, so you only see a, a gray spot as in this field. This is the main problem in the usual molecular experiment. Nowadays, using single molecule techniques, we are able to see clearly each ship in the flock, so we can con see each molecule inside the sample. In our lab, we work with DNA molecules that are the main basic uh, unit of information in living beings, and also these uh, molecules are involved in many, many, many processes in, in, in bio uh, biological process, as for example, in the transcription and replication. Thank you, Mark. As he said before, DNA is a, is a molecule that plays a major role in, in all of biological processes, only in the major part. One of the most known examples is the cell cycle, which is the cell replication process in which DNA must be replicated to. In that process, from an original DNA molecule, we get two new DNA copies. The fact is that this process is very sensitive to errors that occur during the reading process. During this process, DNA, which has a double helix shape, has to be opened, and some proteins must read the, the sequence of the DNA. And this process, if it happens an error during this process, we can obtain maladapted, in, maladapted individuals of the population, which are represented by those strange colored sheep, instead of the white and black usual sheep. sheep. So, during my PhD, I'm developing a technique to identify and classify the molecules, the DNA molecules in a sample. So my framework is the following one. I have a sample in which there are, there are a lot of, of nucleic acids of different population that can be understood as a, as a healthy molecule with a correctly replicated sequence and some mutants that, have, that present some errors, like mismatches, internal loops in the sequence. So, in the context of single molecule experiments, I will try to identify the, those molecules. And how, we do, how do we do that? We use one of the most known techniques, such as optical tweezers. That should be a video, but it doesn't work. <laughs> With that technique, we can trap molecules and exert forces on, on them. So we can study the elastic response of, of the molecules and try to classify them. So how do we do that? As I said, we, we trap a molecule and exert the force. Then, observing the, the, the force that the, that the structure opens, we can classify the populations. If you look at the, at the rightmost uh, graphic, we see a, a normal molecule. Like a, we identify that, that molecule as a healthy molecule with a correctly replicated sequence that opens a medium force, 14.5 piconewtons. Instead, looking at the, at the other two pictures, we see that those molecules open at a lower force than the previous one. We can understand this fact, as these molecules have some internal errors on, or, or some mismatches in the sequence. The, the, latest, the latest molecule will produce a healthy individual, but the, others, the, the other two won't. So, okay, is this method really useful? Well. Recalling Darwinism, we know that evolution is based on two main features. Those features are variation and selection. So with that method, we can, 
we can make an approach to study a molecular evolution at the level of a single molecule, which opens a whole new research field in, in science. Thank you. So, as Alvaro comment, we can study the elastic response of each molecule individually, uh, exerting a mechanical force. Or, in my case, I study the elastic response in equilibrium conditions. It means that I maintain the end-to-end -end distance of each molecule constant, and I study what happens due to thermal effects. As you can see in this figure, the force signal oscillates between two states that are uh, represented when the molecule is folded or when the molecule is unfolded. We can do a easy symbol. When the molecule is folded, we have a normal shape, and when the molecule is unfolded, we have a Fourier shape. So, changing this distance that we call lambda, we can favor the folded state or an unfolded state. If we increase the distance, we favor the unfolded state because it's the same that if we increase the distance from the nose of the ship to the tail. As you can see, we can study also the kinetics involved in each transition at different exerted force, and a certain value of the, well, at certain value of the force, we can see that these kinetics cross. This force is called the coexistence force, and in these conditions we can find the molecule folded or unfolded with the same probability. Nowadays, we are studying these kinetics and elastic uh, parameters, changing the temperature. As you can see in this, uh, uh, in this graph, at the beginnings we have a molecule oscillating between the folded and unfolded state, and suddenly, in the arrow, we change the temperature. In this moment, we increase the temperature, so we give more energy to the surrounding medium, and the molecules of this surrounding medium impact with more energy to the molecule. For this reason, the molecule becomes all the, in all the time unfolded. At a certain moment, uh, in the star uh, moment, we reduce the end-to-end -end distance, so we reduce the exerted force to the molecule, and again, we can see that the molecule uh, starts to oscillate between the two states. So, hola. <laughs> okay. So, with these two temperature or more, we can study how the kinetics and the coexistence force change. As you can see, when we increase the temperature, we need less force to open the molecules, and also we can see that the kinetics are faster. So. Due to the, these impacts of the molecules, the molecule can oscillate um, faster. So, with these experiments, what we can do? We can study the elastic response, the thermodynamic parameters, or even the kinetic parameters at different temperatures. We can combine this uh, study with the, the studies proposed by Alvaro and study how each molecule of a population has uh, changed their parameters. And it's all. Okay. Well, thank you, Mark. What I'm going to talk about is what I'm doing right now, what I'm studying, and it's this long and boring title. It's the secondary structure formation of single-stranded DNA. I'm not going to bore, or I'm, at least I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm not, I'm not going to bore you about a lot of details of single-stranded DNA, but just to keep in mind, uh, single-stranded DNA is found in all our cells during when we have to take the information that it's kept, that it's kept in the, in the double-stranded DNA. We have to open it and read it. And also it's found on the telomeres that helps and prevents the genomes to be degraded, to be, uh, to, to be properly stored. So what do we want? I, what I'm trying is to describe the structure of this single-stranded DNA. And in my case, since it's quite difficult to do it, I'm not going to take any kind of uh, color ships. I'm going to work with the normal ones, with the white ones. And what I'm going to do is to describe the structure. Okay, how we, do we describe structures? If you, if you look around you, you can see a lot of structure, I don't know, some, some bows and whatever, but you use, for that, you use your eyes. In a normal ship, you would look at, 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 at it and you would say, okay, it's got, I don't know, a head, fortunately it has four legs and whatever. But in my case, working with DNA, since it's much shorter than the wavelength of, of, of visual, of the optical light, we can see it. So the question became, uh, becomes, uh, how to look if we can see them? Okay, that's a good question. So if I were a usual, phys if we take the usual physicist approach, we make, I don't know, make two molecules or two ships to collide them, and then we will see the parts that, that are taken off this, this collision. 
But if we cannot do that, or because the structure of these molecules is quite, uh, let's say, it's too weak to study with this way, because if we make them collide, we won't see anything, because everything will be destroyed, we do it the other way around. We stretch them. So in that case, we take a ship, and we try to stretch them. What do we see? We see that as the force go, uh, is going up, this, the extension of this ship molecule, let's say, goes up and up. Up until when? Up until some part of this structure breaks apart. So when, some, when there's this part, we don't know what it, what it is because we cannot see it. But we know that something, some articulation, maybe a knee, I don't know if sheep have knees or not, but wherever, something has broken. So that's what we see in here. We have overstretched something. So the main thing we have to keep in mind is that these force extension curves give us information about the structure, even if we cannot see it. And that's what I'm going to study. I'm going to work with these force extension curves, but of different length, sheep, molecules, whatever. What I'm trying to, what I'm, I'm going to do it is, is this thing, is to take different length molecules and to study how does this uh, force extension curves look like, okay? And why do I do that? Why do I do that? that? Because it's funny. No, it's more probably, I don't, I don't know if it's funny to, to stretch a sheep, but whatever. It's, that's not the point in it. So we want to study how single-stranded DNA is folded. What's the structure? And the, the, the main point in taking the different length molecules is to know if there's an effect of the total length of the molecules of the part of the DNA that, that is single-stranded has a, a, a more secondary structure or less secondary structure. That's the main point in studying this thing. And if we represent these force extension curves, we cannot compare them because, I mean, there are different ranges of extension. So what we have to do is to make a little trick that is to divide this extension over the total length of these molecules and then we can compare them. And if we look at the picture, it seems that if we don't take into account the lower forces that can have a lot of errors, the rest of the part of it coincides. So the main message here is that the secondary structure is quite the same. So all of these molecules have to be, I mean, they have the same density of articulations. They have the same um, kind of, uh, of structure in it while they are, are being uh, unfolded or folded. So, um, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do right now to, is to make a theoretical model that explains that, and it will be based on the results of it, because what we have in here is that the, the structure we have is quite local, so the, the, so the length effects are neglectable. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>